Hello and welcome to the Undercut Podcast. I'm your host, Team Lovers Daily, and we are back to preview this weekend's Qatar Grand Prix. Joining my joining from our, joining me as ever are the thorns in my side, Jesse Billington and Ellie Mae Taylor. How are you both? Not too bad. Drove a more spider today. Quite like them. They're nice fun little cars. Mm. Mm. Ellie Mae. I'm good. I've got a cat, which is not as angry as Lola. It's an Apache. We're having cuddles, so that's not too bad. She's doing well. We're going to go straight into the Qatar Grand Prix, and this will be a sprint weekend. It's the fourth of the six that we've got on the calendar for this year, and it's the second ever outing in Qatar, so there's a lot going on, but that's not all that's different because we've got a bit of a different circuit. Well, there was talk of one at least because Lasseo has a 10-year contract from 2023 onwards. Um, and we do have some adjustments since we ran here last because the crowd capacity is up from 8,000 to 52,000 and the track is a few hundred metres longer. There's been a crucial upgrade in the pits, which were fine, but were comparatively small setups because of MotoGP, but were then obviously crammed for F1. And now there is plenty more space with 50 pit boxes, and Pinfarina have designed the trophy, and it's not actually bad looking. And uh, yeah, it's quite nice to have a trophy that looks like a trophy for a change, because there's been a few this season where mm, questionable. So it's, I don't know about YouTube, but I'm quite looking forward to the racing itself i mean if we ignore any kind of tirade that jesse's going to have about and racing the middle east if we look at it from a racetrack and from what we got in 2021 was a decent little race i'm quite looking forward to it Max will win the championship yeah we'll we get onto that in due course um but yeah i think as a as a circuit it's a good one it's a demanding one for cars and has a, a tendency to pop tires so we could see a jumbled up race unless teams just play it way way too safe with tire strategies and avoid all of that but um yeah it's uh we've obviously got this new contract for LaSalle for another 10 years so we'll be seeing that on the calendar into the 2030 30s and um yeah, it's interesting to see the changes they've made for the circuit. It's hosted world touring car races. It's hosted MotoGP before. But obviously the demand that Formula One brings with it is simply enormous. And equally in 2021, I think it was raced behind closed doors in Qatar. Um, so that was why they could sort of get away with only having 8,000 seats. But obviously making sure there's room for 52,000 people means that across the weekend, you can essentially claim you've had 100, over 150,000 people turn up to your event, which is quite good um but yeah the um the capacity with the extra pit box as well just gives teams a bit more space anyone who's been to silverstone and been down to the wing and experienced the international pit garages there um knows that it is a vast complex and has a lot of space in it so um yeah that's what's needed to run at least 10 formula one teams so hopefully seeing 50 boxes lined up will be quite the impressive thing but yeah newly designed pit building and the pin and farina trophy is very much a thing of beauty um um, gone is the kissable technology of the Japanese Grand Prix and uh, back to nicely sculpted items, though I do still miss the giant gorilla that was the French Grand Prix trophy. Yeah, I'm just realising... I think, I think Oscar Piastri's face summed up the Japanese trophy completely when he saw Max <laughs> kissing it on the on the podium. Oscar Piastri is just the perfect reaction for anything, just slightly weird. It just has suddenly sunk in the kind of enormity of the fact or like the novelty of the fact that I've sat in an F1 car actually in the pit, like the pits that are used for F1 in Silverstone. I'm just, I don't know why that's just suddenly sunk in. Yeah. It's kind of a, kind of a weird thing to think about, like the fact that we could just sort of kick around in there, watch F1 cars shuffling around. It's, but it's also a bloody huge building as well. Like it takes a good sort of five minutes to walk the length of it. It took us a little while to drive the length of it in a car. But yeah, anyway, that's that's what we've sort of, the changes we've seen looking ahead to Qatar and equally the weather we're looking forward to. Um, early weather forecasts suggest that 40 degrees Celsius heat throughout the day will be uh, very much the sort of run of the mill for this. Um, so hella toasty. Friday evening, it is however set to drop to around 31 degrees Celsius. 
Windy though with some strong gusts of up to 40 kilometers an hour or so. Saturday is much the same with humidity picking up a little bit. Lower average wind speeds and lower gust speeds too. It's worth remembering how open this circuit is. So gusting winds can play havoc with edgy aero setups. Uh, you don't want a small gust stalling out a rear wing mid corner. That could be spin resultant. Um, Sunday drops to 27 degrees Celsius in the evening, so a lot more comfortable with a lot more stable winds too, ideal for the Grand Prix. Qatar, however, has a lot of artificial grass on the runoff areas built up um, to sort of built up around the track to trap any sand that gets blown in and prevents it getting onto the racing surface itself. So we aren't likely to see a sandy track imp impacting running or causing problems unless those gusts really pick up. So uh, we'll wait and see what happens. It's been a long time since we've had sort of sand on the track affecting a Grand Prix, but uh, see what happens this weekend in Qatar. Uh, crucially, when it comes to seeing what happens this weekend in Qatar, which on-track battles should we look out for? We'll start at the back of the field with Alpha Tauri, and I can see this being a challenging weekend for the Fianza outfit. Qatar is a high-speed circuit with fast-changing chassis loads on the car, and add in the fact that this is yet another unfamiliar track for Lawson, it's a big ask. The car is quick enough in a straight line, but uh, against the steep curbs and demanding corners, this could be too much for the AT04 to deal with. With some, in theory, straightforward conditions to deal with, a streamlined setup might get Alfa Romeo a little closer to the pack. Bottas experience here, possibly giving him the upper hand. Needless to say, after a series of DNFs, he'll be looking for a good result. Haas doesn't have a chassis that's primed for this sort of circuit and could, however, face an uphill battle to get a strong result at Los Ale. Williams might do all right here, provided they can activate a little more of the car's rear diffuser to balance bleeding off the rear wing and making the most of the car's natural speed. They might be in a strong position with Alex. Logan, however, will face a steep learning curve coming into this weekend. Alpine have arguably one of the most neutral chassis going, and while this will offer them confidence through the twisting back section of the track, they might well be eaten up along the straights. McLaren will be looking to work on all their good form thus far and produce another decent round of results. A good setup will be key to maximising performance, but the stability in their driver lineup means that they can afford to trial in the earlier practice sessions to refine their aero. Though there aren't many practice sessions because, as we've mentioned, it's a sprint weekend, a lot of pressure on that Friday early running. This is another weekend for Aston Martin to lose out on against McLaren. Stroll's ongoing performance deficit to his teammate is hampering them in the constructors' battle. Qatar is an interesting track to return to for Alonso, as in 2021, it was the first time he'd scored a podium since Hungary in 2014. Ferrari are hunting down Mercedes at the moment, and given their late season resurgence in form, certainly from Carlos Sainz, the Scuderia could have the upper hand over the Silver Arrows this weekend, but it'll be tightly run, I suspect, and reliant on pit strategies being well executed. Now, last time here, teams ran against Pirelli's recommendation of a two-stop strategy, and many saw punctures hampering their races in the later stages. Red Bull can, in reality, do no wrong. Max Verstappen will win his third world driver's title if he either scores three or more points throughout the weekend, or if Sergio Perez fails to score 32 points throughout the weekend. Max has a very good chance of becoming the first driver to clinch a title on a Saturday since 1983, and the first to win not on a Sunday since 1987. Both those occasions were his father-in-law, Nelson Piquet. In 1983, the title was clinched at the final race of the season in Kyalami on a Saturday, with Piquet successfully outscoring Prost to take the win. In 1987, the championship was won on a Friday, when Mansell crashed in qualifying and triggered an old back injury, and was declared unfit to race on the Friday evening. Evening. This meant that taking into account each driver's 11 best results, which was the style at the time, uh, PK was given the title. And um, at that point, each driver's top 11 haul was 73 for PK against 61 for Mansell. So even if Nigel had won in Australia, it had only still give him 69 points and it wouldn't have been enough to close the gap to PK. So it was very much PK's for the taking on Friday evening. Uh, thanks to a friend of the podcast, Craig Bullard, for pointing this one out on Twitter and sparking a half hour long history deep dive and a math session for me to sort of write that little section. But yeah, it's an interesting little <clears throat> remnant there. We did have this conversation last podcast. <laughs> we did have this conversation last podcast, completely sort of working, stumbling around in guesswork going, I wonder when the last time it happened was. And I think we narrowed it down to possibly being Kyle Army, but we hadn't, didn't actually didn't actually pin down exactly the reasons as to why. So I sort of 
spent some time pouring back over the data and refining our ramblings, which I think I had also trimmed in the edit at that point for the sake of brevity for everyone listening. Otherwise, it was just going to be about 45 minutes of Ellie and May and I chatting history F1. But uh, as fun as that is, not the general consensus for the reviews. Um, but when it comes to previews, we always have our predictions. And for pole position, it is a clean sweep across the board for Max Verstappen this week. Yep. There really isn't any point in even saying why. No, Everyone no. knows why at this point of the game. We had a little bit of hope after Singapore and that got crushed pretty quickly. So we're just back to business as usual. Uh, the same again when it comes to the podium. Everyone has picked the same name for that top step. And, I uh, the to. step. Yeah, you had to because of your weird little pattern of picking the last race's results. And I don't think you're too far off with the results that follow it as well with Norris and Piastri. I'll happily reverse it and have Piastri Norris Verstappen, mainly because it'd be funny for Norris to again get P2, but then Piastri to win and Verstappen looking at them both going, well, what happened here? This is this is this hasn't gone to plan. But at the end of the day, it's likely to be a Verstappen win, I think. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. Ellie May, you've kept with Norris on strong form and put him in P2 again. Yeah, and then signs third. I I don't know, for some reason I think it will be between the Ferraris and the McLarens for the other podium spots this week. And I think you're you're yeah, you're, you're, you're looking down the right tunnel for that one. I've gone a bit left field in the hope of something else happening. Uh, Russell P2 and Alonso P3. Um, I can just see something a bit weird happening this weekend. Uh, I, have a, I have a sense of it. I feel it in my bones. I don't know what to say. Um, when it comes to fastest laps, that's though. Uh, age. You took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> Look, I'm turning 26. It's I'm not turning 76. It's it, it's not that feeling. Like bones. it then. <laughs> um, when it comes to fastest laps, though, we've got uh, a bit of a spread across the board. I've gone for Lewis Hamilton because I know I just think the Mercedes are gonna they're gonna have something refined for this weekend. It might not be great for other race weekends, but Qatar is going to be the one where Mercedes shines, similar to how Brazil was for them last year. Wouldn't be yeah. against it. Yeah, I was I was gonna go for oh no, I can't remember now. I was either gonna go for Sainz or Hamilton and seeing that you'd both put that, so I was like, I'll go for Perez. I mean, mathematically, logically, it's the most sensible answer. He is in the fastest car on the grid, but no, we've been saying that all season, Jesse. Yeah, it's whether he's able to do anything with it is a different matter. Um but you though have got Oh look, I've got signs. a point. Yeah, where are the where are the other 30 odd that you need to keep your title fighter? Like, oh I knew there was something else I was meant to do this weekend. Damn it. Yeah. Uh speaking of title fights or chasing down the sort of lead pack, Carlos Sainz, you've gone from as your fastest lap. Yet again, he has not delivered on the goods since first I chose him, so I will choose him again. I shall until he delivers said goods. Perfect. Um, Ellie May, you've gone for arguably the boldest out of the lot of us with uh, your wild prediction. Uh, Paris doesn't collide into anyone. Which? You wouldn't, you wouldn't have thought that would be a wild prediction, but there we go. No, no. It really does reframe him versus Ocon at Spa quite a few years ago where it looked like it was Ocon, but I think in, in retrospect, with the evidence we now know, potentially... This 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 might have been something we should have foreseen a lot earlier. Um, Timo, it's potentially interesting than could happen and could not not happen because if they ignore Pirelli again, like they did in twenty one, and we see a few tire blowouts, he may just say, "Oh, I've got this," and then just he's actively trying not to climb twenty one, but then the tires take it out of his hands, and he just he goes big punch and goes spiraling off into someone. Um, you're going to hope that it's not Bottas that he wipes out though, because you reckon he's going to score at least one point. Yeah, although if it's over a certain amount of the race has been done and there's no one else <laughs> finishing, I, it, it it's a it's a possibility that he can be wiped out by Perez and still score points. Yeah, if he completes more than a certain amount of the, the race distance, may still get a point and post could take him out. Yeah, there is. It, it's it's there. Uh, meanwhile, I've gone for unique weather hampers running. And Ellie May put after this, that's so vague. What does that even mean? It is. Just say it'll rain. I don't know. No. Because no. if you were paying attention to my weather, no, this is bit, stupid. no, 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 no. We, no. I said either that, have the balls to say it will rain 
or choose a different world prediction because our unique weather hamper is running sod off. Choose a proper world prediction. Look, I think a sandstorm is going to be quite exciting. We haven't had one of those since we first started going to Bahrain or something. Then say a sandstorm happens. I'm so Don't far behind in the points. Can I not weather. just keep this one vague? No. Yeah, but what does it even mean? It means that exactly there's going to be unique weather, which I not yeah, so still and warm and dry. That it's forty degrees. No, that's quite standard for Qatar. Yeah, but it's Don't not. Don't say for there'll everyone. be a sandstorm. No, you're I'm not keep... winning anyway. So what are you losing? Yeah, because if I say it's going to be a sandstorm, it's going to piss it down with rain. If I say it's going to piss it down with rain, there'll be a sandstorm or nothing yeah, at so all. So you like, lose I'm... regardless. So you might as well pick one and get on with it and just. But I know. don't want to lose that possible point. Like I'm, I'm far behind. I need you're to losing try... the point regardless. Like, just let me have no weather phenomena impact no. running. I'm sandstorm not saying it'll impact the race. Rain. Or we'll choose for you. Anyway, oh. what do you want him to choose? I don't know. So this point, she crumbles and really begins into my idea. I've got two cats in the background having a domestic. What do they think? What do they want to happen? Don't ask Lola. She hates me. Yeah, that's true. Ask Lola. I don't know. actually know where she is. I can just hear commotion. I can see Patchy. Obviously, I've got Boston. So... <laughs> Look, all I'm saying is there'll be wild weather. It will impact running. I'm not going to say it's going to impact the race. I'm just going to say there's going to be weird, weird weather that's going to do something. That's all I'm saying for my wild prediction. That's so chicken. vague. I don't care that chicken. it's vague. Chicken. You can call me a chicken all you want. You're the guy. I will. <laughs> Look, I'm just trying to make something exciting happen. Um, really and... not, because you're not saying anything exciting. You're going, oh, you need weather. Yeah, for Qatar, where you're expecting to be about 30 degrees Celsius, bone dry with about 10% humidity and possibly a bit yeah, of a so breeze. at least if you want to spice things up a bit, go for, oh, it's going to be an absolute thunderstorm or there's going to be a sandstorm. Or I'm going for something tornado. outside of that. I've not specified what outside of that, but something outside of those sort of core yeah, which four by properties. is not exciting. Vague is never exciting. I'm sorry, but something out of the ordinary happening is exciting. That is what I'm predicting. Is something out of the ordinary will happen and is therefore exciting. And you're not going to get a point anyway, so it doesn't matter. I suppose. Exactly. I don't know why you're getting your panties in a twist about me just trying to have this. Because it's just a this. boring world prediction, isn't it? It's not a boring world prediction. Look, we've been arguing yeah. about this for too long. It's time to wrap up this week's episode or else the uh, action's about to start on track. Um, it's, that's all we've got time for on this week's episode. Be sure to join us again when we'll be <laughs> reviewing the Qatar Grand Prix and any other news that we hoover up in the meantime. So make sure you've liked, subscribed and got notifications turned on to not miss anything across both our YouTube and social media channels and Spotify, Apple Podcasts podcasts wherever else you get your podcasts Timo where can the people find you you can find me over on is it fast on the curbs the Nitro RX podcast Paddock's Rory and Instagram and uh, yeah plenty of new stuff on at least one or more of those each and every week so do go and check all of that Ellie May where can the people find you bed bed is that it is that just- yeah uh I mean, Possum's had to come down because she's waiting for me to go to bed and, you know, you can't keep Possum waiting. She's come down and demanded that it is now bedtime. Yes. That's fair. Um, in the meantime, though, if you want some more of me, you can find me on Instagram, Twitter and TikTok as at Jesse on Cars. And you can find me also rushing for Classic Car Weekly. It took me a second to try and remember where the hell else you can find me um that's what we've got time for for the qatar grand prix preview i know it's been a bit of a short one but be sure to check out our big news episode which was released just before this one which has plenty of other goings on from formula one and the wild world of motorsports we'll see you after the qatar grand prix <laughs>